time to get back hot again, man. You know, I'm fresh out this thing. Let go. You know you're looking at a winner. You know you're looking at a winner, right? <laughs> it's your boy, Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is July 17th. 2018. I want to give a shout out to my man Rude Mudcrab. This couldn't be picked on a better day. He said he wanted to play some winner by Jamie Foxx. Something to kick this next bull run off. Well, brother, you definitely kicked it off. We are up hella big today. We'll get into the details. What's going on, people? I'm surely glad because, man, my mining contracts were, were looking bad there. I was wondering if I made the wrong decision, but Looks like they're back on track. We'll see what happens though, but we're gonna be talking about two items. One being, of course, the crypto markets. It added $20 billion in 30 minutes. We'll go over the details of that. And then also we'll talk about Dr. Craig Wright. He's well respected, at least I respect him in the community. He was one of the influential parts in, in crypto, in Bitcoin, I should say. He worked with Satoshi Nakamoto. At one point he said he was Satoshi Nakamoto. I don't know about all that, but he's saying that ERC-20 tokens are a dead end. We're gonna see what he means by that and see if he elaborates on that in this article. We'll look at that shortly, but first, let's take a look at that market cap. Currently sitting at $293 billion, and Bitcoin's dominance has dropped a little bit. It's at 42.96%, still kind of up there, though. So uh, look to see that come down a little bit more. Um, but overall, as you guys probably expect, a very green day. Man, EOS finally, man, taking back off again. Bitcoin Cash finally taking off again. I actually am mining both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. It alternates depending on what's more profitable, but that's great to see Bitcoin Cash up, mooning nicely. Looking good here, looking good. So um, let's take a look at this chart really quickly. And I drew this this morning before the move up. <clears throat> the algorithm for the trading room actually went long I kid you not, you can ask everyone in the in the rooms if you join, it went long about right here on Bitcoin. So that that's neat. But what I drew though, what I wanted to tell you guys about was I drew these this morning. I said, hmm, that looks like an upside down head and shoulders, or they call it inverted head and shoulders. That is a very bullish move, just as a head and shoulders would be a very bearish move. Looking good, we're running to slight resistance right here at this line, 73, 45, 50, I have it. If you're, a, if you're a pro and you know how to work these markets, you might wanna short right here. I don't know, I might put some contracts on. I, I took, I covered the ones that I had, um, down here it's near six thousand so that's cool may put some on right here just a few nothing big and maybe put a stop loss above 70 800 you know see what happens there i may do that later but uh overall looking great so let's go ahead and take a look at that article that talks about this massive move up out of ccn crypto market adds 20 billion in 30 minutes as Bitcoin spikes above 7,400. And it just says here, the Bitcoin price has surged 10% over the past 30 minutes, subsequent to experiencing a substantial spike in its volume. Within one hour period, the price of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ether, Ripple, wonder why they have a lowercase for Ether, it's weird. Ripple, EOS increased by six to 10% as the valuation of the cryptocurrency market surged to $292 billion from 272 billion, more than $20 billion. An unexpected corrective rally occurred in the evening of July 17th, pushing the price of major digital assets to spike by large margins. Bitcoin and EOS have been the best performers out of the major cryptocurrencies, rising by nearly 10% in a short period of time. Personally, wouldn't say it wasn't unexpected. There are some definitely some pennants that were broken on the top, on the way up. To the upside and like they said the volume started to spike so if you were on the markets you probably would have positioned yourself very well for that in a previous report ccn noted that the market has seen an emergence of a series of positive events such as the government of south korea regulating this cryptocurrency market which could fuel the next rally of the market optimistic developments in leading 
cryptocurrency markets, including the US, Japan, and South Korea, were not reflected by the crypto market over the past two weeks. And the recent bull run may begin to portray the progress the market has seen in terms of regulation, adoption in general, consumer demand. And I was just saying that maybe two, three weeks ago, like, you know, the sentiment wasn't wasn't there. You know, we had positive news all year, to be honest with you. But the markets just haven't been digesting that in a way that's bullish. So maybe it's pent up demand. Maybe I think it's just technicals. I think it was just a technical we had an inverted head and shoulders. I think a lot of buying was at 6,000 because the institutions are probably buying it. That was like their area. Plus, that was like around the low for mining costs. Like my mining contracts were, I was making very little money at those 6,000K uh, level. So I think it was a, co a combination of things. But uh, tech from just from a technical standpoint, that... that um, rally today was definitely driven by some technical breakdowns or breakups. I don't know what you want to call it, but it says here, strong volume momentum building the difference between the rally on July 17th and previous false runs throughout June is the volume currently on Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. The volume of Bitcoin against Tether is 300 million up from a hundred million since July 16th. In two days, the volume of Bitcoin tripled. Mm, interesting news there. It says here, last one, previously, David Solomon, the newly appointed Goldman Sachs CEO, admitted for the first time that Goldman Sachs is preparing to launch a proper cryptocurrency trading platform. I'm not a proponent of these institutions getting and dibbling and dabbling into the crypto markets, but I know it's going to happen because there's money to be made. It's a capitalistic society we live in. So... I got to I got to expect it, right? So with that being said, you're going to see a lot of money over the next 12 months really pour in. 2019 is going to be huge, I think. I'm still thinking and this I have nothing to to back this, but just a gut feeling that we may see 16, 17,000 by the end of the year, which is phenomenal cuz we're already in July, middle of July if you want to say so you guys let me know what do you think about this rally what what caused it i'm going with just technical breakout to the upside you guys let me know though let's check out this next article it's out of crypto vest bitcoin cash proponent dr craig wright says erc20 tokens are dead in i was uh intrigued by this title so definitely wanted to check what they what he had to say about this <clears throat> he says here it's a controversial statement Dr. Craig Wright, known for supporting Bitcoin Cash, stated he believed the idea of ERC-20 tokens is a dead end and those assets have no future. In a recent tweet, Dr. Craig Wright shared his polarizing opinion. He says here, the ERC-20 ERC idea is a dead end. You will find exchanges starting to have to ban such coins soon. You will find exchanges starting to have to ban such coins soon. Law is law, and long term, these ideas are death. Certainly not Bitcoin. Any base coin doing this will be targeted easily and be a dead man walking. Ah, okay. So I guess he's referring to regulation possibly let's see what he's got to say here it says the statement was part of dr wright's support for developments in bitcoin cash right now the bitcoin cash project is working on the wormhole protocol to support smart contracts and actually the wormhole i i did notice that it, it debuted today uh, honestly so um check that out if you guys are interested they're bringing some concepts back that i told you guys I remember back when I got into to Bitcoin and the colored coin concept, which is basically like ERC, where you're coloring certain coins to represent certain things. It, they don't have to just be um, a utility token. But Dr. Craig Wright, in theory, almost all networks can support smart contracts and possibly tokens, even Bitcoin, with its Omni layer, which is famous for the Tether USD tokens. However, Ethereum-based tokens are quickly becoming the industry standard for their ease of generation. Because owning ETH is relatively easy, moving those tokens is also rapidly available. Dr. Wright, however, believes that technology may be displaced soon despite its widespread presence. 
The statement is a part of a beef that uh, Wright and Vitalik has in the past, uh, Buterin calling Dr. Wright a fraud. Wow. For many projects, tokenization is a way to quickly build a new economic model for rewards, transactions, and so on and so forth. Other projects use the ERC standard as a preliminary stage, later moving to another blockchain with different rules. Still, some projects plan to remain on the Ethereum network, including Basic Attention Token. I think that'll change. Amizago, I think that'll change. And others like the Ken project will keep the ERC-20 token, but also offer a way to swap it for a faster digital asset that's more like it, which would be used within the Kick Chat app so far. And that's another Kick actually launched their app today as well. That's crazy. So far, almost no app has found a way to directly use ERC-20 tokens, which require ETH holdings to pay for gas every time the tokens are moved. Yeah, this is the problem, guys. This is what I was saying to a few people. Like, you're just not going to be able to use Ethereum on a day-to-day -day basis for, for end users. Because you, you, you can't expect end users to just have... Basically, the idea, the way Ethereum has been built is before it's time. So what I mean by that is, if we were five years from now and Ethereum came out, then yes, it would, wouldn't be a problem. More people would have, you know, the access to cryptocurrencies. Maybe, maybe many of those on-ramps may have been built already at that point, And people would readily have the ETH to pay for gas and have things done on the on the um, blockchain but I, even with that i still don't think i think the business model is flipped it needs to be where the users pay nothing and the project developers um pay you know and so i think blockchains again i, I hate to sound redundant but blockchains like that will have much success and really make the adoption for the uh, masses easy so we'll see here. The last paragraph here says recently Coinbase announced the potential addition of several new assets, including basic attention token, woo woo, also an ERC20 token. The exchange service added support for the token standard without promising to list any of those assets. So we'll see. You guys let me know what you think about this article and what Craig Wright is talking about. I'm not sure <laughs> I agree, even though I don't think Ethereum long term is going to be able to sustain just from a business standpoint unless they are successful with transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake but i don't know what the hell dr craig wright is talking about i'm not too sure why he's saying i'm not getting it from this article why he's saying erc20 tokens are a dead end i guess because they're assets or it will be considered assets but uh that, that shouldn't stop. I don't think that would be a reason to stop ERC-20 tokens to be, from being used peer-to-peer um, -peer wise. So, I don't know. You guys let me know. Make sure you guys get over to CryptoBlood.io. Copy one of those tees. I'm wearing one today. Too legit to quit. And that's pretty much it for today, people. It's your boy, CryptoBlood. And I'm out. Holla.